took the breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me And though the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights to
Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and happy Easter to you. Uh, this uh, is Easter Sunday morning, and we have come together for our time of devotion, and I thank you for allowing me to be part of your family devotion uh, on this wonderful Easter Sunday. Uh, it is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because Jesus is alive, and he is well, and he is risen, and he has conquered death and hell, and we continue to celebrate. It doesn't matter if we can't be in the same building, in our hearts, in our homes and everywhere we are scattered around the world today we continue to praise god and to celebrate what god is doing and what he has done that he has conquered and because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone isn't it wonderful I hope you're enjoying your Easter Sunday morning so far. And maybe you had a fabulous breakfast and, uh, and then you're looking forward to the fish and the bun and cheese and all the other stuff. Uh, but even if you don't have any of that, give the Lord praise because he has risen and we have risen today to face a new day. It is a wonderful day. I, I again, thank you for allowing me uh, to, to do this. I, I give the Lord thanks that, even though we can't come together in our traditional manner and celebrate the way we, we normally would do, uh, it's still a great honor to be able to envision everybody in my mind and to be able to, to, to receive a word that I believe is, is a word from the Lord uh, for his people. So I want you to lean in with me this morning. We're not going to be long. I just like to be quick and engaging and, I, and deliver to you what the Spirit of God has placed in my heart. And, and I intend to do that today. So let's, let's go to the Word of God. But before we do, let's, let's say a word of prayer together. If I can get everybody to join in with me and say, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise for allowing us to see another Easter. And oh God, it, it may not be in the manner that we normally do, but we are so grateful and we're so thankful because today we think uh, about the resurrection and the resurrection power. And we thank you for resurrecting our lives and taking us out of death and bringing us into life. And we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory today. Bless all the families, bless all of our children, all of our seniors, all of our husbands and wives and our homes. Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks today because you're an awesome God. I pray now that you would speak to us from your word. Open our hearts, open our understanding to everybody who will watch this video. I pray you minister to them. We give you thanks and honor and glory today in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Praise God. So we'll turn our attention to the Word of God, and I want you to just uh, try to put aside all the distractions. I really want you to tune in with me right now and to look into the Word of God with me. We're not going to be long, and we just... I just want to share with you, I'm, I'm sort of excited to share with you this thought that God has dropped into my spirit. As you can see, I'm in the, I'm in the office of church and, and we were you know, just getting prepped, uh, not, not here on Sunday morning, but uh, just in my heart and in my mind, I'm there and I'm thankful to God for what he's doing. And I'm so excited to share this word with you today. So I'm going to bring up the scripture that we are going to be using today. And it's taken uh, from the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 11 through 17, and I'm going to read it uh, for you. Uh, it is, uh, we're going to preach or talk today about the story of two large crowds, the story of two large crowds, and you know, we'll see where we go with this. Luke chapter 7, uh, reading from verse 11, it says, Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. It's the first large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Here we go again. And a large crowd from the city was with her. That's the other large crowd. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And so 
he who was dead sat up and began to speak and he presented him to his mother I want you to note that he presented him to his mother then fear came upon all and they glorified God all of them saying a great prophet has arisen, has risen among us and God has visited his people and this report about him Jesus went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region I want to share with you from there just a, a quick thought that the, that's been dropped in my spirit that I really uh, want you to, to lean in with so we understand from this story uh, that that there were two large crowds and the first one the first verse we read in verse 11 and I'll just pop it back up here quickly so that uh, if you're not tuned in with your Bible you can you can see it uh, it says now it happened the day after now it happened the day after so what happened uh, is about to unfold to us but to really grasp it, it it's a continuing story from something that happened before so if you look at what happened before you will you'll see in the previous verses before verse 11 the story of a centurion whose servant was very sick and dying and the centurion sent his people to go and find Jesus and bring Jesus back to his house so that Jesus could could heal this servant who uh, he loved uh, that was sick and so they came to Jesus and really begin to plead with Jesus to come and and heal the servant because they, they even mentioned to Jesus the centurion was a great guy and he had done so much for the people for the Jewish people he, they said as a matter of fact to Jesus that he even built a synagogue for us so really we would like to express our thanks to this guy if you can just come and and, and heal his servant and Jesus listening to them was okay and, and they started the journey going to the centurion's house on the way though they they met with some other servants from the centurion who, who came to jesus and said you know what the boss says you don't need to come he, he he just he apologizes for even telling you to come to his house he says he's not even worthy for you to come to his house and and he doesn't want to order you to do anything he says he's a man of authority and he can say to this one go and they have to go and this one come and they have to come but he doesn't want to exercise that that power over you by telling you to come to his house so he says you know as a matter of fact if you stay right where you are and you just say the word that would be sufficient uh, I think you you're powerful enough you don't have to come to my house you can do it from right where you are and Jesus was amazed at this and he, and he says wow what what great faith yeah, I'd seen this kind of faith in, in Israel and so it tells us that they they proceeded to to leave and go back to the centurion's house not including jesus but his servants went back to the house and when they got there they found the servant who was sick well and fully restored miraculously healed and so the story continues and it says the day after that now a big crowd had had witnessed this happening you'll read about the big crowd in the earlier verses and and this whole situation with the centurion so now they were fired up they were excited because they realized suddenly that jesus can do these miraculous things and he was so powerful that there was just nobody like him and they wanted to go wherever jesus was going they were excited about him they were excited to see more miracles i'm sure uh, he was just a happening thing and you know and, and a crowd gathered and you know we'd say today he went viral everybody started hearing about jesus and they wanted to just be wherever he is they were excited about whatever can happen because they believe that this guy could fix the situation he can he can do the miraculous so we had this one big crowd coming along with jesus as he's traveling and then the story shifts to another crowd and it talks about they were carrying out a man that was dead and a large crowd formed the funeral possession that was the procession that was going with this dead individual and then it singles out the story says his mother was there and he was her only son and that's important he only son and she was a widow meaning her husband was also uh dead and passed away so 
in that society, you didn't have a husband and you have the one son and he dies. She was in a really, really unfortunate position. And so there was sadness in this large crowd. Uh, they, they were weeping. The Bible refers to the mourners. And in those days, you had the genuine mourners, the, the family and loved ones and people who were associated with this man that passed away. And they probably looked at him in the young life and had all the potential and everything. And it looked like it was all gone now. And the sadness of what's going to happen to the mother now, uh, just people just started to weep every time they think about it. And then you had people who were hired to be actual mourners. That's just a thing they did back then, uh, where people just weep and wail and made a whole, and just created an atmosphere of sadness. So we've got one crowd with Jesus, all excited and fired up because he can do great stuff. And then another set of people with a dead man, and they were all sad and mourning and crying. And the Bible talks about these two large crowds all of a sudden coming to an intersection. They uh, come to a crossroads together with each other. And I begin to, this, this story begin to grab a hold of me today. And I begin to think about it and think about my own struggles and realize uh, that, that I experienced this. That there is one moment, and it happens when, you know, when we're among a lot of people, it, not today, but if we're talking to people, and whether it by text or on the phone, and we're talking about Jesus and about God, and we're so excited about what God is doing, even in this time of pandemic, our faith is strong, and we, we're, but when the crowds are gone and we're by ourselves, it's almost as if we're in the other crowd. There's a sense of sadness and a sense of uncertainty about the future, a sense of not knowing what's going to happen, how things are going to unfold. There's so much talk today about the world will never be the same after this pandemic. Nothing is going to be the same. And, uh, and we don't know if that's for the good or for the bad. There is so much. We don't know when this is going to be over. And, and, and so much uncertainty and hopelessness that can creep in. And what we find is that, that we're living a life almost at a crossroads where there are these two sides of us. There's the one side that wants to believe God, wants to see great miracles. We have seen great things happen. We have heard testimonies of great things. We just know that God can do stuff just like that big crowd with Jesus. And then there was the other side of us that just don't know where things are going to work out, how they're going to work out. There's a sadness, there's a worry, there's a fear if we would be willing to admit it and confess it because we just don't want to expose that side to anybody. And we may want to come across as if everything is just well, but, but God is speaking to us uh, to be just honest and upfront because we're not sure that, you know, we're trying our best to put the best face and foot forward. But at the same time, there's this dead situation that we don't know, you know, how it's going to work out. How, how are we going to get past this? Those who this Easter Sunday want to celebrate, want to be happy, want to know that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, but God, we, we can't gather. We can't leave the house. We can't. This is just a, a strange, strange situation. These two crowds coming together. And then something weird happened. Jesus goes to the woman, the mother, and says to her, do not weep. Well, that's a very odd thing to say to a mother who is a widow who's now lost her only son. Do not weep. Sometimes we don't think that God understands what we're really going through. We're just talking honestly in our devotion today. It's like, I don't understand. Like, God, I, this, this is impossible not to weep right now. It's impossible to, to look beyond this epidemic, look beyond what is happening right now. We can't see this far. Jesus says, don't weep. And he's trying to assure us it's going to be okay. But the mourners were still mourning at this point. And he walks over to the coffin, the Bible says, and he lays his hands upon it and stops the funeral procession. Now, here's another sort of weird thing. Because usually, if you're coming along and there's a funeral, people stop to allow the funeral procession to go by. You don't ever want to be that, that person who tries to, you know, butt through a funeral. Like, no. So people just wait. And, and let it go by. But in this case, the happy crowd all stop. 
the sad crowd stop because Jesus stops everything. And then he says to the young man, young man, arise. And the dead person rises up, sits up, and begins to speak. And then the Bible says Jesus delivered him to his mother, brought him, maybe by the hand, step him off the, the coffin, and walk him over and says, here, here's your son. This is why I told you, don't weep. And begin to realize that, that, that even on Easter Sunday, we're reminded that Jesus, he rose from the dead and he can raise the dead. And I mean literally, and I also mean spiritually and figuratively. I'm saying that whatever we're going through, however impossible, however hopeless, however discouraging you may feel and know this Easter, I want you to know we serve a God who is able to raise the dead. I know that we, whenever we think of this, we think of Lazarus. He's the famous one that was raised. But here is a person who in response to a need of a woman who felt life was now hopeless, couldn't see anywhere past where she was at. Jesus brought her son, brought the dead situation and delivered and says, this is why I told you not to weep. I want to say to somebody, this is the God we serve. This is the Jesus that I'm talking about in 2020. He is able, he is able, he is absolutely able to turn your life around. He is able to bring your situation out of the impossible with God all things are possible. I want you to lift up your faith in the almighty God. I want you to know that God who you serve is able and strong on this Sunday to deliver. Don't let everything bring you down. Don't be discouraged to the point where you lose faith, but I want you to rise up in faith. I want you to be encouraged today to that even if things seem impossible, this guy was already dead. All the traditions, all the things that surrounded, all the things this woman would have heard, all the mourners, everybody was just, uh, just accelerating the sadness of the day. But God stepped in and turned the situation around. And I want you to believe God with me because I know he's going to step in to this situation for all of us. But I feel it in my spirit. He's going to step into your situation. The person that I've put this whole thing together for, that God is speaking to you, that, he, that he, your faith needs to be restored. And you got to step away from that crowd that you're in, that crowd that always are just bringing us all the negative and showing us all the bad stuff. Step away from that crowd because God's about to change everything. You know what happened? He came and we had two crowds when we started the story. But after this young man was raised and given, the Bible says all the people began to glorify. God. We had one big crowd that was all worshiping God. Not just half the people, not just half of yourself, but I am telling you, the Lord is about to restore your whole self. You're going to go to bed praising. You're going to rise up in the morning praising. You're going to become the person who have proven and seen that God is able to raise every situation in your life. I want you to believe God with me. I want you to have faith in him again. I want you to celebrate this Easter, the resurrection of Christ, but not only his resurrection, I want you to celebrate your personal resurrection, the resurrection of your career, of your family, of your marriage, of everything that pertains to you because we serve a God who is able to do it. And I show you from the word of God where he can stop the funeral and he can change situation. And I pray today in your home that God would bring about that change that you're seeking. He would bring about that change that you're praying about. He would end the worry that you're worried about. End the fear that you have about what's happening and restore faith and anticipation and expectation for a great revival. I say to us church, say to you Grace family, God is preparing us for a great revival and he's going to resurrect that which we thought was dead and gone, that which we never think would come back. God is able to restore. Don't weep.
Don't weep. Don't weep this Easter. Don't weep because God is on the throne and he's doing something great. Amen. God bless you today. Uh, and and I, I wish you and your family a happy Easter and a most wonderful, wonderful time. Would you just allow me to pray one more time and give the Lord thanks. Father, I thank you today for your grace and your mercy and your power, your power to resurrect our situations. Thank you, Lord, for being able to step into to our homes, step into our lives, Lord, and change the struggle that we are going through with two sides of us competing, Lord. I thank you that you can make us one in praising and rejoicing and giving you thanks. Lord, you are an awesome God. You are a great God. And you have defeated every enemy, including the, the, the grave and death. You have conquered them all, Jesus. And we give you thanks. I thank you for resurrecting lives. I thank you for hope. I thank you, Lord, that we've got a future that is great in spite of what is happening. You can see stop the funeral. You can stop the progression of whatever is going wrong and you can change everything. You're this awesome God that we serve and we give you thanks and we give you prayer. Bless all of our family. Bless everybody that's watching this video. Bless them, I pray. Strengthen them, I pray. Comfort their hearts, Lord, today. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would invade their minds and overturn every doubt and every fear and help us not to be, be weeping in a time, Lord, when we serve a God who is able to deliver us. I give you thanks in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I want you to continue to celebrate and give the Lord thanks today. I just want to bless your life and, and allow the Lord to step into your home and into your situation. Stop the everything that you are worried about and just take a moment today and give God thanks and praise. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Happy Easter from my family, from the, the ministry and the leadership of Grace Life Center. We wish all of you a wonderful, wonderful Easter. God bless you today.